When 219 West arrived on the set of Christiane Amanpour's new show, Amanpour, She's in Manila. They know where she is. There was breaking news of a massacre of 57 people in a southern region of the Philippines. You said the deadliest ever, right? Never in the history of journalism have the news media suffered such a heavy loss of like one day. One day. Wow. Uh -huh. Yeah, in one day. Wow. The Amanpour team was scrambling to find an expert from the Philippines who could provide insight into the killings. Really pull together. I mean, this will be, you know, our big hit, you know, the top of the show. And they found one. Tonight, a gruesome massacre in the Philippines. The journalists who were killed were actually going to an event where a candidate was just filing his nomination papers for an election that will happen six months from now. Afterwards, Amanpour sat down with the crew of 219 West to talk about her new show. It's one of the very rare programs on American television which talks about international stories, international affairs, brings you really vital information from abroad that's, that's vital to Americans and, and American security and American, you know, knowledge right now. The new program focuses on a single issue for a half an hour. It broadcasts overseas five nights a week, and then Amanpour has an hour program that broadcasts in the U.S. on Sunday afternoons. We're harking back on my program, I think, to the original mandate of CNN when Ted Turner started it in 1980, and that is to show the world to the world, to viewers here in the United States and around the world. Amanpour is keeping traditional journalistic values and using some new tools to accomplish that. About new media, we harness it, we use it. You can see that we have Facebook, we have Twitter. We're very, very uh, devoted to our CNN.com page. Social media is a lot of eyewitness reporting. Very valuable, very valuable. But it is not yet, and I don't think should be, a replacement for... Uh, experienced journalists, for journalism which goes out and checks sources and relies on its credible and, and trusted reporters. Amanpour is critical of commentators who don't offer fact-based reporting. You know, a lot of what happens on social media is commentary. A lot of what happens on many of the uh, uh, cable networks right now is commentary, what I call armchair pundits who sit back and who give their opinions from thousands and thousands of miles away on what's happening in a village in Afghanistan or in, uh, you know, a, a new endeavor in Iraq or wherever it might be. Now, commentary has always been part of journalism. But what I'm saying is that it should not overtake fact-based reporting. Because if you don't know what's the facts and what the truth is, then, you know, there's no bar to measure anything by. And what about cutbacks in international reporting? All I hear from bosses is, oh, the American people are not care don't care about international affairs. Oh, they don't care about, about the rest of the world. Or even worse and even more. I think offensive to the American people, a lot of bosses say, oh, Americans, you know, too silly, too, too, too stupid to understand what's going on in the world. I mean, it's really appalling. And I think people should start standing up for their rights. And information is a fundamental civil and human right. Where do you see the future of broadcast news going? You know, there's a lot to be pessimistic about, but I'm an eternal optimist. And I believe in pointing to the successes in, in broadcast journalism. Uh, you can look at 60 Minutes, you can look at Nightline, you can look in the radio sphere at NPR, w, uh, WNYC here in New York. All these really brilliant journalistic enterprises which are doing well. You know, I'm sorry about what's happening to newspapers and I hope to God the business model can somehow re regain its footing because a world without newspapers is a world that I don't want to live in. You will not grow up in a strong democratic society if you don't have a strong, independent and rigorous press. And that's what's at risk today. Do you miss being on the front lines? I feel I'm still on the front lines. First of all, I haven't stopped traveling and I'm still uh, going abroad and I still will and I will 
travel this program. It's only been up and running for three months. But what I'm doing here is I am on the front lines of fact-based reporting. I am bringing into the studio exactly what I used to do in the field. So I'm still, I believe, on the front lines of something that's increasingly important, and that is real, source-driven, credible, fact-based information. And then people can make up their minds and comment about it and have opinions about it. But a world without real information is a world that's weakened and, and, and impoverished.